horse meat scandal to volatile energy prices, supply chain issues affect us more than we might think. Today I'm joined by Cassian Electra Sinead Roden to discuss. So first of all Sinead, what are we talking about when we say supply chain? So supply chain very simply is just all the different actors and entities that are connected uh, to each other to deliver goods and services to, to us, to you and I, the end user. In terms of what it's composed of, well there's, there's material obviously that flows, um, you know, raw materials that, that flow around um, to create those products, there's services, supporting services, there's information, uh, demand information, order information and finance. We often forget about the, the finance, the monetary um, aspect of supply chains. Supply chains are made up of all sorts of different entities from, from suppliers, you've got focal firms through to warehousing, distribution, retailers and, and ultimately customers. So what are some of the pressures on supply chains? I think one of the key pressures has to be their ability to manage risk. Now we can categorise risk in, in different ways. I think one of the most common ways is into you know, high impact or probability, impact and probability. So if we think high impact, low probability, like floods or, or typhoons or natural disasters, those things that are very hard to forecast, very hard to control and very hard to recover from. Uh, on the flip side, we have those lower impact but higher probability events, often uh, down to, um, it can be for anything from supplier failure to, to port strikes to, to, to things that we can perhaps sense are going to occur at some stage, quality defects. Um, easier to recover from, easier to, to compile a response within your supply chain because of that ability to forecast. I think managing these different types of risk is one of the big challenges for, for supply chains currently, as is evidenced by a lot of the recent press reports when disasters have happened and things have gone wrong. And what effect has globalisation had? Globalisation has offered an immense amount of opportunity from a supply chain point of view in terms of where we source um, our, our supply um, to, to our markets, you know, where we can sell into. However, there's been a lot of pressure as well created as a result, um, a lot of complexity, you know, the horse meat crisis and the, the supply chains that were very much representative of the problem there, you know, long, elongated, no transparency, no visibility. That, that was really born out of this, this, this globalisation um, effect. Um, there's also the fact that we're outsourcing an incredible amount of our production, uh, which in itself can gain lots of cost economies, but there can also be a lot of challenges in managing very stretched, far-reaching relationships with those suppliers. What about sustainability? Sustainability is really something we can't afford to ignore. Supply chain managers will, in essence, in time, actually become sustainability managers, really. Um, we think of sustainability in, in, different, in different ways. Um, so let's break it down to environmental, for example, in looking at greening or being more efficient, reducing carbon footprint, reducing our emissions, thinking about the products we use and how we recycle them. From an ethical um, or social point of view, it's, it's looking at the communities and the world around us, looking at how perhaps our production um, affects the communities in which those production plants are located. Um, there's also uh, concerning issues uh, around the sourcing of, of some of our products. Apple, Intel, a couple of high profile examples um, of late that announced uh, that they were going conflict free in terms of the sourcing of a lot of their minerals. You know, that, that's a substantial statement and a substantial claim to make given that you know, they have extensive huge supply chains and they are basically saying we want to take more accountability for what happens to those communities, uh, to those, those, those social groups at the bottom end of our supply chain. We want to make sure they are not harmed in the sourcing of our components. What attributes would you need to work in this area? I think the, the skills and the attributes have really changed um, of late. Uh, in the last 10, 20 years, supply chain management itself has really undergone such a transformation. If anything, we have been very much defined by the past. Uh, materials management, logistics, uh, shipping, um, warehousing. And that isn't, that isn't what supply chain can be about anymore. It needs to take on a much more strategic dimension. And that has had a lot of uh, input into defining what the supply chain professional should look like, the skill set they should have. They need to be incredibly analytical in their skill set and in their frame of mind. They need to be able to analyse and, uh, and interpret large amounts of quantitative information but importantly have the ability to turn that into something that's qualitative and makes sense in the context in which it's being applied. 
The organisational skills, the teamworking, the leadership is all crucial also. Another thing that I think deserves a mention is you know, the fact that supply chains are so interconnected um, across the globe. Uh, we are increasingly relying on other organisations and cooperating with other organisations. This requires a very finely honed uh, ability to work with people uh, and those social skills are crucial. Uh, relationship management um, from within your organisation um, to externally with key suppliers, with component manufacturers, the ability to manage those relationships is crucial and that can you know, be from a social point of view but also contractually, you know, negotiating skills, those things are crucial. Thanks for your time.